Welcome back to JDM Legends presented by Turn 14 Distribution. Our Amazon grade hog ring tool has showed up, which means it's finally time to finish off the interior. So after watching a few videos, um, this seems, the, the hog ring seem to be the, the way to go. However, some people do prefer the zip tie method. And uh, in this case here, actually, the zip tie method seems like it's the better way to go because we're not sure where exactly to place this. As you can see, we are placing this here and you kind of want to make sure it's going to be in the right spot because if it's too low or too high, we're going to be in trouble. Uh, however, with the zip ties, we can slot these a little bit more than with the rings. The rings are, I feel like, going to give us less slack. So I'm thinking that's the, the better way to go. And truthfully, I just kind of want to try the zip ties because they're the, the more accessible way to do this at home if you're really doing it yourself. So I'm gonna just wrap one in here. And what I found is a set of needle nose pliers. You can just reach down and pull it through like that. And I'm gonna do that three times here. And then we'll... Uh, there is a, like a rod underneath the phone yes, there yes, that he's yes, hooking yes, it around. So it's yeah. not just going into the phone. Yeah, like, let's just judge this if it's in the middle here. Try to get this straight around there. So I'm gonna cut a relief right in here. And like I said, this is where the beauty of this is now, I'm just gonna give it a little bit more so... We'll be able to slide it up or down. Yeah, so when this, to, yeah. exactly. So when this goes in, you can see now there's a bunch of play. Now let's see, now we pull this tight. So I'm just gonna yank that down like that. Bam. Now come in with the pliers. Look at that. We have done this side as well, so you can see. It's in there and uh, dude. It's a good start. Do, do the zip ties work? I'm into it. I think they do. All right, this is a bit of a two-man job here. And uh, since my hands are steadier on the camera than Moose's, we're, we're putting them on hog ring duty here, everyone. It's more exciting than a moose doing hog ring. And uh, uh, exactly. It's, it's very fitting <laughs> I here. I think if there's a job he was born to do, this might be it. So uh, show us what you got here, boys. Yeah, and really, this is a great example of where the hog ring, I think, is, is a better play than the uh, zip tie. You can see here we'd have to be cutting through the leather. So there's no metal or anything like that. It's just leather. And I think the hog ring works really, really well here. So let's, uh, let's see how this goes. We already did one and it worked pretty well. Okay. I don't know. You probably can't see anything, but yeah, that, that's the tool. And we are in. There it goes. <laughs> A little click. And yeah, and that's about it. So we're just going to continue to do this. Okay. Some good hog ringing, boys. Let's see what this looks like. What's this thing looking like? Man, that thing's Is looking that taut? It's looking pretty good. You got to beat on it now like a pro. Beat on it, wipe it, beat on it. That's right. That's right. Oh, I've created a couple more lines here. Let's, <laughs> now you got you to gotta finesse. That's see, right. finesse. Ah. It's smooth. Ooh, smooth. There you go. So no moose on this job. There man. you go. Yeah. Look at that. First time ever, and granted, this is the easy one. You can judge us when we do the, the lower one, but man, this thing fit up like a champ. We did have to cut a hole up here, and look, we got it right. Look at that. Like, oh, the backside here also had this piece of cardboard that we had to bolt in place, but oh, dude. The hole's lined up. Yeah, like really this is looking tight. This is actually a job you could do yourself, although we did have three dudes working yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah, so we did. We did. That helped, we did. for sure. You, you, for me, this is not a one-person job. I'm sure there's upholsters that do this. One person, they know the proper technique, but uh, with two of us and then add the moose, we can get anything done.
there's the bottom seat cushion. And as you saw there, we used a combination of like zip ties in the inner areas and then the hog rings around the perimeter, which worked for us. And overall, I think the end product is really good. Like the center leather section here is nice and taut. And I think the cushion areas look really good too. We do have a little bit of bagginess out in these outer bolsters and Pete and I were talking about it. We think that's maybe just because there isn't enough bolstering in this particular cushion to kind of like fill it out. Yeah, it's weird. Like in the middle here, you can see that the, the bolstering nice and, really helps, yeah. but there it's kind of like- It's a little, a little loose flat. in here, yeah, but so it's, it's not like bad. Not in there. I mean, if you look at cars from the 80s and 90s, the back seats that were molded like this often had this kind of a look. Yeah. So I think there's just some variation in the cushion and the cover and you get that. But overall, I think it fits really Still, well. So for our first try, man, I think it worked out stupendously well. Yeah. And yeah. you know, it just goes to show anybody at home can do this. Yeah, exactly. I think it, it was well worth trying and I wouldn't be afraid of trying it again. We're just taking a closer look at these seat covers and coming to terms with the sort of like the slight color difference between the black vinyl and this microfiber in the middle here, which has a very slight bluish tint to it. But as I think we've mentioned before, they look worse on camera than they do in person. It's a very subtle difference in person. And I think it's mostly just due to the, like, the texture of this um, Nova suede, as it's called, which is a synthetic suede. We did think about dyeing it and Pete actually went out and bought this suede dye. However, I started to read the box and realized this is used for natural suede, not man-made suede like this. So then I did some research on how to dye a synthetic or basically a polyester suede like this. And it's a totally different process. You either have to put it in like boiling water with a dye specific for polyester or you paint it, which Pete actually did an episode on. We can put a link in, up there, which four of you will click on where he painted his R32 seats, which had a suede section. Or were they completely suede, Pete? Or they just had like suede? No, they were all suede. Were they yeah, all suede? yeah, I just painted the whole seat. It didn't go especially well, did it? No. So we're not keen to do that, especially since, like how do you tape off this edge here? It, it just, it would turn into a bit of a nightmare. And given how subtle the color difference really is, honestly, I'm perfectly happy just to live with them the way they are. It's not like anyone's ever gonna use the backseat anyway. Once they're in the car, I'll forget about it, you'll forget about it. Those Recaros are gonna look so good up front, which is going to be visually what you see when you get in and out of the car and what you live in. So. To me, we're kind of obsessing over nothing here. So let's just put them in the back, bolt them down. They look way better than they did before and move on to more important stuff. Yeah, and I think we really need to see it out in sunlight to make a proper decision because the yeah. lighting here does give it that kind of like bluish hue. Yes. Certainly the cloth seats look darker. Yes. But like you just don't know what it's gonna look like in real life until yeah. you get it outside in, that, in true sunlight. Yeah, right? that's a great point. Wow. That looks so good. I'm I'm really pumped on how well that turned out. I think it turned out better than I could have imagined. Yeah, in the previous episode, we kind of showed it in here without being like buttoned down and it looked yeah, bad. It looked all baggy and nasty, <laughs> yeah. but now that it's installed, it looks really good. And I'm really liking this Nova suede material in the middle now. I think it actually adds a lot of nice sort of change in texture and, and color. Slightly. Yeah, it breaks it up a bit, right? Exactly. Yeah. Otherwise, it'd just be like a sea of the same blackness back here. So. And I think it'd tie nicely with the fabric front seats too, so. Our Titan brackets have arrived, and as we had hoped, these are going to buy us a lot of headroom. You can see these are very nicely made. Looks like it's a good durable coating on it. I think this little loop at the front here is actually maybe for like a substrap on a fiber, like a five point harness, but most importantly, you can see that there's very little drop to these front mounting points, where on our old planted bracket, you can see that drop is way, way higher, so. As we measured before, I think this is like an inch and three quarter, this, this distance here. So this is going to bias that inch and three quarter back, which should be enough that I can actually sit in the car properly with a helmet on without having to kink my neck over. So that is our hope. The one issue is uh, these were not, are not drilled in the sides here to mount to the Recaro sliders on our Sportster seats. So we're gonna need to position these the way we want, drill those holes, bolt it down. So a little bit of work required, but well worth it to get that headroom back. Before we can mount up the Titan bracket, we are grinding down the metal on this area of the uh, Recaro bracket, and that's because it sticks out a little bit past the sliders, and we want to get the Titan bracket on here as flush as we can. So it's just a little bit of grinding to get that nice and flat like we have on this side. 
with the old flapper wheel on our Milwaukee tool. So off we go. So in order to figure out where we are gonna drill these holes, we kind of lined this up, Dave and I did together off camera and marked it with a green spot right there as you can see. And uh, now I came in and used my new Starrett center punch here. And I wanted to, to give a shout out to Mike over at Stance Works. Thank you for putting me onto this thing because this is what I was using in the past, people. And I always thought it was mediocre, but until I got this, I didn't really know how bad. Like, look at, okay, so here's this punch. See that, this one barely works, okay? If you look at that tiny little mark it left, I don't know if you guys can see that, but watch this one. Boom. Look at that. Oh, wow, that man. is a true center punch. So it just goes to show, this is your like cheap Amazon one. This is a high quality one. Well worth the box spent on that. And now How much I'm, was that one, do you recall? Oh man, I think it was, it was over $50 okay. for sure. So not so, cheap. No, not cheap, but listen, look at, it, it, does, does, the it does the job where yeah. you're not gonna have a, a, a wandering bolt or a drill bit which is exactly what I need here. So can you guys see the problem with this scenario what we've just done here? Can you post in the comments if you want before we go forward? Because I'm gonna explain uh, what we have uh, happening here. And that is when you try to go bolt this to the ground, you're gonna have a nut that's sticking out here. And this piece is gonna hit the floor and you're not gonna be able to bolt this in place. So uh, we weren't counting on that, but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take one of these bolts now and reverse the setup here, put it in here. We're going to uh, make sure we chamfer this so this will sit flush with this. And then now we can put a bolt on this side and bolt this together and I think that will give us what we need. The real cr critical part here is you do not want, this bolt is too long, so we have to go get a shorter bolt because you do not want it to be too long so that it interferes when you're sliding the rails around. So a little bit more work than we anticipated, but we should be able to figure this out. As you guys just saw, we ultimately decided to go with these button head bolts just because of contact point. I was a little worried if I had tapered this, we'd lose a little bit of material there. And I think these are gonna clear just fine. Um, we also put our seatbelt on and uh, you can see that the difficulty with the seatbelt is you do need to have a special bolt. So I pulled these out of the stash. You can see there's a bit of a gap here for the seatbelt to sit. And then you need this special ring here that goes on there and it just like gives it enough resistance. So you can see it still moves, but it's not gonna like fall flat every time. So thankfully that worked out there. And man, DP, I, I think we are ready to bolt this in. Oh, you guys probably saw me have to grind the heck out of this corner here. And that was because we couldn't get this bolt in here with, uh, with the way it was set up. So. Just a quick little grind, a, a bunch of like small little modifications, but I think in the end, it's all well worth it to have this thing as low as possible. And if you look at this, this is kind of where your butt sits. It is literally as low as possible. Titan, you have saved the day and you've designed such an excellent product. These seat rails 
are as low as they could be with that base. And you can see this seat is now so, so much lower. It's, it's kind of incredible. Before, this was like almost up here. You yeah. remember DP? Yeah, it was. And now we've like dropped this down so much. Let me jump in here. Oh yeah, that looks, dude, that's proper. This is proper. You're looking wow. through the middle of the windscreen yeah, instead of the if, top now, Even right? if you move up all the way here, like you're not, before we were up here, yeah, I felt like kind of like a truck driver's view. Now yeah. we're down here, which is so nice. So this, this feels proper. Well, it certainly feels like I'm in a better seating position than I was before, and if you go back to that previous video, I think I could only get two fingers above my head, and now I can get a whole fist up there. And, uh, I mean, that is the appropriate time to make a joke about fisting, but uh, I'm not gonna do it, everybody. I will not make a joke about fisting. You're not gonna stoop to that level, I would not huh? stoop to that level, but this does mean I can fit in here with a helmet on. I think I'll still be quite close to the top of the door here. So I might be you know, leaning slightly eh, to the left. I don't think so. I think you're gonna be fine Should by the looks of it. I think, I'm, think yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, you could still move the seat back a tad too. Like, yeah, I am a little it backwards. Now too. So, just go back a notch yeah. there. Yeah. And I am, I mean, I, I like to sit fairly upright, but the steering position, I want the wheel closer. I feel like maybe a, a spacer or a quick release hub in here or something might Make it feel a little yeah, more. Yeah, that, that wheel right now is in the like the highest, highest position, position. So if you yeah. you can kind of like tilt it off to your left. Yep, yeah, there you go. Up, up, up. Yep, oh, you got guy. it. Yep. No, 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 no. Yep. Yeah, up, up and down. There. Oh, up. Yeah. look there at that, everybody. Ooh. So maybe I'll go check the stash and see if we have a. Uh, it's close. Like it, it's. I've just, I'm just spell. like slightly stretched more than mm -hmm. I want to be, but maybe I maybe I'd get used to it. Look what Pete had hidden away in the stash. What did this come out of? Uh, my old Evo 8, I think. Evo 8, okay. I think, yeah. So that is a works bell quick release. And as you can see, it is pretty girthy. So, and you can see it also has bolt holes for all the steering wheels in the world. So I think it should work with a personal as well as all the other stuff you can should, think of. Yeah. However, it's pretty thick, so. Yeah, I think we need to go to like a slim hub adapter. Back like in the, here? Yeah. Yeah. And then bolt that guy on, so you kind of get it. Yeah, yeah that's going to be like, that's going to be full race car, touring car spec. Yeah, which if this was a track car only, I would say let's do it. But it, it I, I like the fact that you have some room here for a street car. It just makes it more comfortable for, you know, multiple people to be driving and so on. So, yeah, I think this is going to be too close. So do we obsess over it or, you know what, I think I just need to drive it like, like this. And looking at your hand position right now, it looks fine. Like Honestly, I have it some seems like a, in my yeah, arm I mean, here. I mean, if, I, you, if I was stretched out like this, like, yes. you know, when you go to a racing school, they say, oh, you should be able to put your wrists on top of the steering wheel. And you can see I can't quite get my wrists there. So I'm a little further away than like, if you, you know, lower the, lower the wheel a little bit more to too. You can go, yeah, if you go like all the way down. It's so close. You're closer, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. That's getting close, for so, sure. I mean, if you adjusted the seat. Actually, you know what, uh, yeah, that does help having a lower. However, eh, the clutch leg doesn't matter. It's the heel and toe leg, and I still have good room for heel and toe here, so. It's, it's, it's not really gonna matter either, because um, when we're drag racing. <laughs> That's true, you're, I'm just smashing uh, gears. Yeah, I'm not yeah, heel and yeah, towing. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be so far ahead of you that you're just oh, gonna is be, that yeah, is that how it's yeah. going down in your imagination? Okay, yeah. well, yeah. before you can beat me at drag races, PT, you need a motor in your car, buddy. So uh, this thing is basically done, and we have a lot of work to do over there. One other thing showed up, look at this. Brand new ashtray. 
Because this one was tweaking Pete's OCD. He just had to go and buy another one, didn't you? I did, I had to. And it wasn't expensive. eBay coming through for like 50 bucks. Is there so. some secret to this coming out of here? Oh, don't break it, DP. Don't uh, don't scratch that rubber. I know, like, look at the matchy matchiness here, everyone. Looks brand new, because it is. And uh, I don't know how well you can see this on camera, but this old one is kind of like faded and the rubbery texture on it's kind of half worn off and scratched up and it just looked terrible because this whole panel was new so having this worn out thing in the middle of a new panel was not working well for Pete's OCD so uh, even though the Supra is theoretically mine I think you guys have seen Pete's invested a certain amount of himself in this build he's he's, he's making decisions it's the love in of the here. game man it's the love of the game for the sure the love of the game. <laughs> Listen, when you get fired up I just get out of the way and let you do your thing because I know you're going to do the right thing and I let your OCD end up with new ashtrays. So, man, it's looking amazing in here. This whole car is looking proper. I'm, I'm kind of blown away how nice it is. By the way, in case you haven't guessed it already, we did decide to go with the cloth seats in here. And that just basically came down to, I think both of us agreeing that aesthetically, these look nicer in the car. And for me personally, I like the cloth from a grippiness standpoint. It just holds you in the seat a little bit better. You can't lose with either setup. I just think, for me personally, I like the cloth, but... Uh, yeah, and now seeing both in here, I think they do look killer, man. They do. They, they look they amazing. really, really they, do. I mean, these seats would look killer in any car. All right, that is a wrap on this one. And man, this car is looking really good. It is basically complete, but we do have one more episode for you on it where we're gonna wrap up a couple of loose ends before it is officially ready to go to the dyno, make some uh, GTR crushing horsepower. And then it's really just a matter of waiting for good enough weather to get these things out to the racetrack and really see what they can do out in the wild. So that is what's coming next on the Supra. And of course, there's still quite a lot to do on the GTR. It is lagging behind on the builds just like it's gonna do at the racetrack. So one more on this before we go to the dyno, a few more on the GTR before it goes to the dyno, and then of course, springtime racetrack, at which point we declare the Supra the obvious winner. Thanks for watching again, everyone, and we'll see you in the next one. One of the last things we wanna do in the engine bay is actually reinstall this OE heat barrier that goes on the underside of the hood, but man, the more we look at it, it is pretty disgusting and it's kind of like deteriorated on the inside. It's